When it comes to deadly fighting forces, there are some which can instill fear in the hearts of bad guys with just the whisper of their name. No, I'm not talking about Batman, rather the special forces of some of the world's most famous and well-trained armed services. From a squad of elite soldiers who refuse to remove their balaclavas for anyone, to a recruitment process that involves weeks of being chased through snow by dogs and armed soldiers, here are 20 most elite special forces in the world. Number 20. The 72nd Special Operations Brigade It takes a whole lot of work and skill to become a member of the super elite 72nd Special Operations Brigade in the Serbian Armed Forces. This is not a job for an average Joe or indeed an average Miroslav. This special unit is trained in everything you could think of, from special operations to sabotage to even space combat. But it doesn't end there. They're also apparently way into birds, as their forces feature special names like Operation Battalion Griffins and Special Operations Battalion Falcons, but they also get down to the nitty gritty and on the street level with an amazing military police platoon as well. To even get into these forces takes a grueling amount of time as well as a solid and stout personal resolve. Recruits should expect to be put under a rigorous training program that lasts an arduous six months, but will see them becoming experts in subjects like you would expect. Snipering, demolitions, weapons, but they also have to learn how to thrive in harsh conditions. So advanced courses in mountaineering and wilderness survival become essential. And like other special forces, they have a super badass motto that reads, when others can't and don't care, there is only the 72nd, which always can and dares. How catchy. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Danish Special Forces, the Jaeger Corps. Now, when you think about Denmark, you probably think about things like amazing architecture, the outstanding way they treat maternity leave, and of course, everyone's favorite, Lego. But what you probably don't consider is that the country who is touted as being one of the happiest places on Earth actually has a badass special forces brigade. The Jaeger Corps is the elite special operations force of Denmark and boasts many branches, which includes the Special Operations Command, whose training regiment rivals that of other special operations groups like the British SAS and the famous U.S. Army Rangers. This special operations force is well trained in feats and skills like unconventional warfare, recon, counterterrorism, and more. And that's pretty good for a country whose most famous and popular street food is the hot dog. To trace its origins, we have to go back to when Sweden was being a giant bully to Denmark. Now I know, Sweden bullying anyone? It's laughable at best, but that's exactly what happened. In 1785, the good year that it was, Sweden decided to get together with Prussia and Great Britain and cause quite the nuisance. That's when Denmark was like, hell no Swedes, and they formed a light infantry unit that was made up of skilled hunters and woodsmen. This unit would eventually become what is today known as the Jaeger Corps. But getting to where they are now took a lot of years and many wars, including the Cold War. Today, though, the Huntsmen, as they are known, are responsible for assisting many operations throughout the world, which include their old one-time enemy, Sweden, and are a well-respected organization that also cross-trains with many countries who once considered them both a threat and an enemy. Number 18. Marcos Commandos the Marine Commando Force, also known as Marcos, is an elite unit of the Indian Navy. They're highly trained and super badass. Oh, and they're famous for their beards as well. 
The Marcos are a special operations team that are part of the Indian Navy, so as you would expect, their specialism is primarily in amphibious warfare. But this squad are not confined to the watery environment of the Seven Seas. As a modern-day combat force, they're trained to the highest levels to operate in all terrains, and in our current-day world, their primary objective is counterterrorism. Amongst the most highly respected and finest of special forces, the Marcos are one of the very few who are qualified to enter the water with fully loaded combat gear. As well as their extraordinary skills in the water, this unit performs direct action, hostage rescue, unconventional warfare, and special reconnaissance amongst other operations across all terrains. They're feared amongst terrorists operating in their region and known by them as the Bearded Army on account of their uncanny ability to sport a bearded disguise when on operations in civilian areas. Now, how many people can actually pull off a fake beard disguise that doesn't result in pointing and laughing, let alone instill fear in the hearts of the hardened terrorists? These must be some really scary dudes. Number 17. Pakistan Special Service Group Created in 1956, the Special Service Group, also known as the SSG, is Pakistan's elite armed forces services unit, which comprises of only the very cream of the crop, the real strength of which is a closely guarded classified secret. There's nothing to see here. Move along. In a part of the world where there's often conflict, the need for a unit of highly trained and extremely disciplined soldiers is often a priority, and Pakistan is no different. Since its inception, the SSG has played a significant role in every major confrontation that the country's been involved with. But how do these soldiers become SSG? Well, in order to be considered, they must have at least five years previous military experience. They then take part in a nine-month course at the SSG base, and this course is the kind of intensive training that you would expect, like a montage sequence in a movie, marching in full gear, airborne training, hand-to-hand -hand combat, intense physical fitness training, standard stuff for the toughest of recruits. And they really are the toughest, because only about 5% of them actually make it through the training and join the SSG. Number 16. Unidad de Operaciones Especiales the most badass branch of the Spanish Marines, the UOE's mission statement says their aim is to carry out in-depth special reconnaissance and offensive direct actions against highly strategic and heavily defended objects. So all the easy stuff then. This unit is a group of highly trained individuals whose missions often include such outings as intelligence gathering and reconnaissance ahead of the deployment of regular troops disrupting enemy communication systems, retrieval of personnel from behind enemy lines, shock assaults, and raids. These are just a few of the ways that this elite force can be deployed on the battlefield and in enemy territory. It's high risk and highly skilled work, which requires the very best Marines that the Spanish forces have produced. Prospective recruits for this division are drawn from the Spanish equivalent of the United States Marine Corps Fleet Marine Force. These prospects are then put through their paces in an intensive selection process in which the candidates are pushed to the very limits of physical and mental abilities. This is designed to find only the very few who are capable of meeting the extreme demands of this unit's activities. Once selected, the recruits are then sent for their operational training. This is an intense program of parachuting, commando skills, and combat medicine amongst a boatload of other essential marine survival and tactical skills. It's absolutely no place for the faint of heart. Number 15. J.W. Grom one of five special operations units in the Polish Armed Forces, JW Grom, or the Operational Maneuver Response Group, is deployed to many special operations, anti-terrorist actions, and infiltrations behind enemy lines. 
These are the elite soldiers of Military Unit 2305, and they're very serious indeed. To become a serving member of JW Grom, candidates have to pass a series of rigorous psychological endurance tests, including the interesting and somewhat scary-sounding truth test. Just what that entails is known to those that have suffered the intensely grueling physical and psychological field test that's designed to separate the wheat from the chaff. Following selection, these chosen few then undergo a specialized training regime which equips them in a variety of disciplines, in particular anti-terrorism, sniping, parachuting, and diving. Following this, approximately 75% of these recruits are then trained as medics. This elite unit's trained to the highest levels of military strategy, and they're known to use capture and kill methods. As well as this intense training, the Grom are equipped with some of the most formidable weaponry available today. Number 14. Special Air Service, the SAS. The British Army's renowned forces, the Special Air Service, otherwise known as the SAS, are an elite squad of the best and most highly trained soldiers. This is a commando force that was first established in 1941 during the Second World War when it was used to run secret operations behind enemy lines in the North African Campaign. Following on from its inception, this elite unit was deployed on many other parachute operations during the remainder of the war. After a brief disbanding in the immediate post-war period, the SAS would be re-established and has continued to play a major role in British warfare ever since. One of the most respected special forces in the world, the SAS is comprised of one regiment, the 22nd, and it has two reserve regiments, the 21st and 23rd. They're trained in anti-terrorism, desert warfare, jungle assault, reconnaissance, extraction, and close quarters combat, as well as multiple other tactical techniques. The SAS has been at the forefront of tactical innovation since it was created and has influenced many special forces around the world. Their motto, who dares wins. And that kind of tells you all you need to know about this particular fighting force. Number 13. The Navy SEALs The formidable U.S. Navy SEALs are named for the places that they operate, the sea, air, and land. This highly trained, super organized, and most equipped of combat forces is the envy of the rest of the military world. The history of the Navy SEALs lies in the Second World War, where the units of elite frogmen first came into prominence on operations. Nowadays, the SEALs are not restricted to water, they conduct missions in all environments. So, their training is amongst the most rigorous and demanding of all elite forces on Earth. Selection for this special operations force is based on three fundamental aspects. The candidates must be what they call men of character. This is an obvious point, really, but it's absolutely essential that the recruits be men of courage, honor, and commitment. This is not a job that any Tom, Dick, or Harry can do without those personality traits. Secondly, the physical demands of being an elite Navy SEAL require that the chosen individuals be extremely fit and able to perform to the highest level in all environments, in particular, the water. And thirdly, the recruits must possess intelligence and the ability to rapidly learn tasks and adapt to changing situations. This elite special force is often deployed to conduct reconnaissance missions or anti-terrorist actions, often behind enemy lines or where they're sent to engage in raids or assaults on enemy targets. When the USA led the operation to attack the then leader of Al-Qaeda, Osama bin Laden, in 2011, it was Navy SEALs that were called upon to perform the task. Number 12. The National Gendarmerie Intervention Group, GIGN. 
The highly trained GIGN are specialists in hostage rescue and counter-terrorist operations in France. They're part of the National Gendarmerie and are employed to respond to major threats both within France and elsewhere in the world. The 2007 GIGN underwent a major reshuffling in which the unit absorbed several other gendarmes teams to become a consolidated 380-member unit. This was to increase to 420 members by 2010. The idea behind the joining together of the groups was that it would be possible to deploy a 200-strong unit to any given situation should a larger-scale intervention be required. This is part of the French government's general militarization of the police force within the country in recent decades as they become a heavily armed combat force with specialist training and tactical equipment. As the nature of threats to public safety has changed in the modern world, so too has the kind of training required. The GIGN has now become a highly specialized intervention squad with super skills in large-scale hostage situations. That this is even a thing that needs so many trained combat forces gives me the proper creeps. Number 11. Joint Task Force 2 the snappily named Joint Task Force 2, or JTF-2, is a Canadian Special Operations Force. I wonder why they went with being the number two force, though. It doesn't make them sound the absolute best, now does it? More like the backup guys. You know, the number twos. JTF-2 was formally assembled back in 1993 and immediately became Canada's main counterterrorism unit. They serve along with the Canadian Special Operations Regiment, the Canadian Joint Incident Response Unit, and the Special Operations Aviation Squadron. Together, these elite teams make the Canadian Special Operations Forces Command. Let's just hope that they're better at the combat stuff than they are at naming things. It turns out, as you would likely expect, that most of the information about the Canadian government's counter-terrorist unit is actually classified. There's not much point in putting all your tactics out there on the internet now, is there? But what we do know is that since their formation, the JTF-2 commandos have been deployed to many major conflicts around the globe, including Bosnia, Afghanistan, Haiti, and Iraq. They've been at the forefront of the so-called War on Terror, as well as more domestic duties like pulling security detail at the Winter Olympics in 2010, or on bodyguard duty for Canadians traveling overseas. But they just mostly remain super secretive, and they barely even pop up in video games or movies. I wonder what they're up to in Canada that needs to be kept so very secret indeed. Number 10. Grupo de Intervento Special GIS Now it's well known that the Carabinieri, Italy's military police, are by far the most snazzily dressed and dapper of all the various armed organizations, so what does their elite special intervention group look like? Well, boiler suit clad ninjas, actually, seemingly surgically attached to their balaclavas, the GIS are highly skilled, heavily armed, and disappointingly dressed, more or less like in all elite armed forces in the modern world, but they do seem particularly keen on their eye-peeping headwear. As well as their outfits, there are a few other things that put the GIS into the category of world's most elite special forces. These guys are selected initially on their motivation when they're required to participate in a five-month-long initial training course in which they do copious amounts of martial arts training tactics, English language study, explosives, topography, photography, terrorist ideology, and some combat shooting as well. A well-rounded curriculum for sure. After this training, the selected recruits will then go to specialize and take courses in such things as combat driving at Ferrari, no less. So far, the Italian Carabinieri GIS sounds like the most fun of these special forces. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Number 9. Alpha Group the official name of Alpha Group is the suitably severe Directorate A of the FSB Special Purpose Center. 
The Russian elite standalone unit is one of the most highly trained and respected in the world, and funnily enough, is also pretty secretive. As a dedicated counterterrorism unit, its main tasks are the prevention and intervention of terror-related activities in public buildings and on transportation. Such is our modern world, after all. The Alpha Group, also known as Spetsgruppe A, was first established back in 1974 when the Soviet Union Union was still intact, and this unit was part of the notorious KGB, not to be confused with the notorious BIG. As it's not only an elite special military force, but also a Russian one, it should come as no surprise that we actually know very little about their operations or strategies. Likely as not, this unit is under the direct control of the top Russian leadership, but this is based on general speculation given the secretive nature of the Alpha Group. But according to what is known about the Directoriate B, it seems likely that Alpha do perform some of the same kinds of operations, like paramilitary stuff, covert ops, and counter-terror interventions both in the Russian Federation and abroad. And the air of mystery that surrounds Alpha Group, well, that's just to add to the general feeling that this elite squad are probably very, very scary. Number 8. New Zealand Special Air Service The NZSAS has been in operation since all the way back in 1955. This Special Forces branch of the New Zealand Army was inspired by the British SAS, and it follows many of the same structural and technical elements with that most famous elite unit. This is New Zealand's Defence Forces' premier armed combat unit and has been deployed all around the globe from Afghanistan to the Pacific to Southeast Asian jungle environments. This elite squad has all the skills for all the different theaters of war. The highly trained NZSAS has all the usual counterterrorism responsibilities that seem to be the standard for these elite special forces nowadays, but they're also prepared for special ops overseas and the technically difficult disposal of radioactive chemical and biological devices, as well as the ubiquitous improvised explosive devices, or IEDs, that dominate the battlefield in modern times. Such fun! But you know that being an elite force isn't all booby traps and shoot 'em ups. Sometimes they just have to tidy up messes. Number 7 GSG 9. In the aftermath of the massacre at the 1972 Olympic Games in Munich, the German police force was deeply in disgrace. There had been a deliberate relaxation of security in a misguided effort to prove to the world that Germany had moved away from all of that aggressive militarism of its past. Eleven Israeli athletes were taken hostage and murdered after a failed attempt by the West German police to stage an intervention. It was in this climate that the G SG-9 would be created. This is the Border Protection Group, an elite unit within Germany's Federal Police. This squad has been involved in some high-profile operations, its first being the hijacking of a Lufthansa flight in 1977, where, following a few days of mad demands and landings all over Europe, the plane ended up in Somalia, where the GSG-9 force was sent to neutralize the situation. Which they did with merciless efficiency, taking out four terrorists and rescuing the remaining hostages. The whole show restored confidence in the ability of the German security forces, and since then, most of the stuff this team gets up to is actually classified. However, they did a few public-facing Cold War missions against the Red Army, keeping up the image of the GSG-9 as a badass Western fighting force in the 20th century's war games. These days, they're much like other special forces, in that they're highly trained counter-terrorist units with a bunch of combat skills including explosives, marksmanship, assault training, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and all that other clever tactical stuff. Number 6. Spetsnaz 
The Specialist Reconnaissance Wing of the Russian Army, the Spetsnaz, or Special Designation, is a light infantry force that is in a similar vein to the United States 75th Ranger Regiment rather than a commando squad. That said, this is a highly specialized unit with great skills in counterinsurgency and recon, which is generally sent on missions for power projection and against insurgency in contemporary war zones. The Spetsnaz has played an important role in many recent conflicts in Syria and Crimea, and the unit is apparently geared towards what is euphemistically called political warfare, which is how the powers that be in Moscow refer to the sorts of combinations of traditional military missions with covert measures, which is a roundabout way of saying sneaky stuff. The Spetsnaz elite force are generally used for training guerrillas, for reconnaissance on the battlefield, covert operations, and sabotage behind enemy lines. As a part of Russian military intelligence, this unit is a strategic asset, which Moscow deploys to add an additional layer of influence wherever they choose. Number 5. The Army Ranger Wing the key special forces division within the Irish Defense Forces, the Army Ranger Wing, also known as SFA or, or ARW, is based at Kira Camp in County Kildare in Ireland. The selection process is as grueling as you would anticipate for such a force. It's comprised of a four-week course to weed out the best candidates, followed by a super intense six-month training scheme which focuses on weaponry, explosives, combat medicine, hostage rescue, close quarter battle, marksmanship, mountaineering, and basic parachute training. This unit was formed in 1980, and over the years, the SFA has evolved its role to become primarily focused on counterterrorism. Within this are specialized technical disciplines in which the ARW is skilled in anti-hijack operations on all forms of transportation, hostage rescue, air and sea interventions, search and rescue, and pursuit over all terrain. They're also obviously super soldiers who excel at all the usual military basics and are often deployed to perform reconnaissance operations, intelligence gatherings, raids, sabotage, and the capturing of enemy personnel. Like all armed forces in the field of modern warfare, the ARW is called upon to perform within a plethora of defensive operations, primarily counterinsurgency, protection services, and specialist operations. For this vaguely named activity, it's probably best to read Top Secret Covert Ops. The Irish Army Rangers is an elite commando unit that's been involved in peacekeeping operations within the remit of NATO, and they've been deployed to many conflict zones across the world, including Somalia, Lebanon, Liberia, Chad, Croatia, and Bosnia. Number 4. Jagda Commando, Austrian Special Forces. This team of soldiers has a badass name. They sound pretty scary indeed, and when translated, it means Manhunt Command, which is still a fierce moniker and you probably wouldn't want these guys running after you. The Austrian Special Forces as they exist today began in earnest after World War II, with the elite Jagdkommando being established after two Austrian officers took part in a training program within the US Army Rangers in 1961. This has been their training style ever since, using a combination of their own local skills and tactics and taking additional armed forces training with the United States or other European armies. This unit has been deployed in many a modern day battlefield, which includes the Balkans, Afghanistan, and Chad. Now, if you want to join this team of exceptional individuals, you'll have to undergo one of the toughest selection processes in the world. The brutal test includes the infamous 72-hour field exercise in which candidates suffer extreme tests of physical endurance, endless marches, psychological pressure tests, and a total sleep deprivation during the entire 72 hours. Most, well, they end up failing. About 20% will make it to the next level, which is the basic training course, and this entails freezing weather conditions, loads of snow, almost no sleep, and intense physical endurance. These recruits are subjected to days of being hunted through the harsh terrain by helicopters, dogs, and infantry, all before being captured and subjected to the final 72-hour-long captivity phase, which frankly, 
sounds like a barrel of laughs. Number three, Delta Force. The shadowy figure of the Delta Force lives somewhere within our collective consciousness in the form of all the movie and video game depictions of this elite squad of badass soldiers. It's inspired many a paintball battle and sparked the imagination of children who grow up wanting to be elite commandos. Officially known as the 1st Special Forces Operation Detachment, Delta Force is a U.S. Special Missions Unit with the primary objective of counterterrorism. This is clearly a modern-day obsession in all the armed forces that we have so far looked at. As part of their extensive training, Delta Force not only excels at counter-terrorist operations, but they are highly skilled in hostage rescue, direct action missions, and covert ops, often working secretly, albeit. Alongside the CIA, Delta Force also provides elite protection services to U.S. leaders when overseas. Delta Force would be created in 19. 77 as a precision strike force unit in response to the increase of terrorist activity around the world during that era. Although most of the operations they've been involved with remain classified, there have been some that are documented in books and media, and these no doubt add to the unit's unique perception in the public imagination. This elite special force is famous for being responsible for such exploits as locating Saddam Hussein, the capture of El Chapo, and they were part of the joint engagement to capture or kill Osama bin Laden. Number 2. EKO Cobra Another elite Austrian unit, EKO Cobra is under the direct orders of the Federal Ministry for the Interior. It's a dedicated counterterrorism unit which was established in 1978, and it was during this era that many countries were beginning to create specialist anti-terror forces following the horrific deadly attack on Israeli athletes at the 1972 Munich Olympic Games. EKO Cobra uses a bunch of specialist equipment which includes all the Kevlar and camouflage you'd likely expect from a commando team. They're armed with mainly Austrian weaponry and plenty of it as well. They're also trained in specialized areas like explosives, sniping, parachuting, and diving. As the threats of terrorist activity adapt and expand, so too must the counter-terrorist forces that are out there combating them. EKO Cobra is one of the special forces leading the way in diversifying and future-proofing for what might come next in the apparently now eternal so-called War on Terror. Number 1. Belgian Special Forces Group Belgium makes some tough soldiers, that's for sure. They also make delicious waffles, but that's besides the point. The Belgian Special Forces Group is made up of recruits that have served at least three years in one of the Belgium Army's para-commando units. They then need to complete 20 weeks of hardcore endurance training, which pushes them to their physical and psychological limits. They complete all aspects of elite training, which includes survival skills, hand-to-hand -hand combat, map reading, military tactics, and radio transmission. Once this initial training period is complete, the commandos are then required to specialize from a choice of three specialties. High altitude military parachuting, which includes a whole load of death-defying freefall action. Then there's underwater fighting skills. Or finally, mountainous terrain operations. So essentially, this is a choice between the most extreme elements that the air, sea, and land have to offer. Once training's complete, the Belgian Special Forces Group will then find itself deployed to perform operations of reconnaissance, surveillance, and penetration of enemy lines. They may need to be required to engage in direct action, sabotage, or even intelligence gathering. The life of a special forces group commando is varied and often exciting, but it's high risk and they're often the first to be sent into a dangerous and unknown situation, all to assess and report back for the regular troops to follow or their specialists in extreme modern tactics at the forefront of fighting terrorist activities and providing protection along with gathering intelligence from deep within the eye of the storm. Do you think you can make it through the basic training? Would you have the cojones to survive the field exercise or even the captivity phase? Tell us all about it in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.